Hi, my name is JC, and this is the third in a short video series on customizing stitch maps in Illustrator or the vector editing tool of your choice. In the first of the series, I showed how to organize the elements of a stitch map and how to make some simple customizations. In the second video, we colored some of the symbols to create a stitch map that shows both color work and shaping. And in this video, what I want to show is how to color parts of a stitch map in order to show where the pattern's repeat is. So in this example, I have the stitch pattern snowflakes. At the left edge, there's a blue part, and at the right edge, a lavender color part. These edge parts are only worked once per row. But in the center, we have two green parts. These are the stitch patterns repeat. If you wanted to make a section of snowflakes fabric that was wider, you would work that this green section as many times as you wanted. In order to create a stitch map like this, the first thing we're going to do is export from stitchmaps.com a stitch maps that has the section view enabled. And it's going to look like this. Pulling up one of those stitch maps, here we have the sections display for the snowflakes pattern. And this is something you can do easily at stitchmaps.com even without a subscription. And what it shows you can be really handy. Each section shows a group of stitches that are interconnected through decreases or cable crosses or uh, clusters, something to that effect. So for example, in this green section here, we start off with a single stitch, gets wider with a couple of yarn overs, and then everything is connected together through this double decrease. This green section in the middle is exactly the same as the green sections on either side, and that's why they're the same color. One fun thing about the sections display is that the white lines that appear between the sections indicate places where you could put a stitch marker and never have it get caught in a decrease or cable cross or anything like that. So the sections display at stitchmaps.com is pretty cool, but it is not exactly what we're looking for in this situation. What we want to show are the non-repeated versus the repeated parts of the stitch pattern. So to make that happen, the first thing I'm going to do is to organize the stitch map as discussed in a prior video. I'm going to create groups and give those groups names, labels to make editing the pattern that much easier. In general, uh, in order to create a group, I'm going to select one item of that group. I've selected one symbol here, and I'm going to use the Select Same menu options in order to select Others with the same characteristics, and then the Object Group option to create a group. However, in this video, I'm probably going to use keyboard shortcuts most of the time just because it'll go a whole lot faster that way. So that's my symbols. I'm going to lock that group so that I don't accidentally make any more changes to it. I'm going to create a group for my row numbers and again lock it. In this layers panel, if we look underneath, the next item is this white box. Looking up here in the color menu, we can see it's got a white stroke to it that works its way around this lavender colored section and immediately below that is the lavender fill section itself. So this is part of the sections display of the stitch map, but it's not going to be really useful. It's not going to be directly useful anyway when it comes to coloring the various parts of the stitch pattern. What I want to do that are to use the polygons. So to scroll down to the bottom of the stitch map, I'm going to, sorry, scroll down to the bottom of the layers panel. I'm going to select one polygon. It doesn't matter which one. Select all the others that are like it. Group it. Those are my polygons. Give that group a name. Lock it. Now I can easily select everything else using the Select All option. Select everything else and group that. Those are my sections. Awesome. So now my stitch map is organized the way I like. I'm going to take one more moment to actually save the colors that you see here because I'm going to reuse them later. So I'm going to select a single section. This is the blue section. So I'm going to save its color by dragging it down to the swatches panel. Do the same thing for green and the lavender. So I've captured the, the colors that I intend to use. 
At this point I can lock those sections, unlock the polygons, and in order to create each part in this stitch map image, I'm going to select a bunch of polygons and then give them the same color. So I'm selecting all the polygons that were in the uh, lavender and blue groups here. Unselect these green ones that I selected by mistake and group them together. That's going to be my left edge group. And I give that group a color. But you can't see the color for this group because it's hidden underneath the sections. So I'm going to turn the visibility of the sections off and we see I actually didn't fill them. I gave them an outline. Let's try that again. I didn't want to outline them. I wanted to fill them with blue. All right, that's what I expect. All right, using the sections again as a guide, I'm going to lock that group and create the next group. I'm going to select all of these polygons in this green group and then the following three groups up to, but not including this green group, green section, to create the next part, the repeated part. So selecting all of these, group them. I'm going to call this group the first repeat. And I'm going to give it a fill color of green. Check my work. That looks great. Lock that group. Repeat the process. So selecting all of these polygons, not these here, group them, give them a fill color, give them a name, lock them, and then that makes it really easy to grab all the polygons in the right edge group. Again, give them a color, this time lavender, and when I turn off the sections display this time, I'm going to leave it off. This is getting pretty close, but the different parts are all smooshed up right next to each other. It would be really nice if there were some sort of line drawn between the parts. If I were to grab one group and give it a white outline at this point, it's not going to quite give me the effect that I want. I'll show you in just a second here. Select the white. Notice that it has outlined each individual polygon instead of the group as a whole. So I'm going to undo that. In order to outline the group as a whole, I select the group and then go over to the Effect Pathfinder menu and select Add. And what this will do is it will effectively add together all the polygons in that group and allow me to put an outline around them as a whole. Select white not black, white, and that's the effect I wanted. The line is a little thin for my taste though, so I'm going to select that again, up it to two. That looks pretty decent. Now I'm going to repeat that process for the remaining three groups. Select all three of them. Select the Pathfinder Add option. It's going to add together each group individually, which is precisely what we want give them the white outline, make sure the outlines are a little bit wider, width of two, and there you have it. We now have a stitch map that shows the left edge stitches, left edge part in blue, the right edge part in lavender, and the two repeated parts in green. That's exactly what we were aiming for. I hope you found this video useful. And if you've got any questions, please take part in the Stitch Maps group over on Ravelry. Uh, that's where we hold discussions. We can ans ans and answer questions. Um, I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.